we are going now to have a talk with Mike Bernard about ABAP Git. Yeah. Right. So exactly. One minute left, or I can already start the introduction or ask a, a silly question. Mike Bernard, if I understood it correctly, you are actually chairman. Ich bin Deutsch, genau. I know. <laughs> <laughs> But you're living still, in... still German, still German, but I, I live in Toronto, Canada Toronto, for Canada. for half a year, but I'm, I'm one of those people who can work from anywhere now. So uh, half a year I spent in, in the south of France, usually as well. That's it. <laughs> okay, that tackles the topic about ever makes you a global person. <laughs> yeah. So then I would say, actually, it's... Uh, 4 p.m. 16 Uhr. Uh, let's talk about ABAP Git for beginners. Right. Yeah. Though the stage is yours. Share your screen. Let me and, see. Uh, have fun. You have 30 minutes. All right. You see everything? The presentation. There you go. Yeah. Looks good. Well, welcome everyone. Thanks for having me for this incredible conference. Uh, and today I'll talk to you about ABAP Git and uh, just a little bit about me. I had a long and su successful career at, uh, at SAP for over 20 years in data warehousing, product management, most of the time in RIG. Um, and a little while ago, two years ago, I quit my job and now I'm bootstrapping my own company, Mark Bernard Tools. And uh, one of my uh, passions is, is ABAP programming. I love to code and I, I couldn't get enough of it, so to say, in product management. Uh, so I started my own little thing. Um, if you have a time, uh, another time, you can uh, look on my website and you'll find lots of ABAP Git uh, repositories from me now as well. Um, I'm building some tools, mostly for SAP Basis and uh, BW, BW for HANA. Um, but one of my core uh, things that I needed, uh, I wanted to do open, soft, uh, open source software. And uh, that's obviously how I came across ABAP Git. I needed a way to, um, yeah, to, to, to back up my code, to, to version it, to... Um, yeah, to uh, develop it uh, maybe in a shared environment, obviously as, as open source. Um, so uh, I looked at uh, ABAP Git uh, very hard and decided to build my complete uh, company based on uh, this incredible tool. Um, and as you can see a little bit here over the, uh, since I started in April 2020, uh, contributing ABAP Git, I have done over 400 commits to this. So large part of my work is actually building out ABAP Git to what uh, our company needs as well. Um, so if you are a beginner to ABAP Git, uh, you, can, you might come from the ABAP world, it's probably the most uh, of you, but there also might be people who come from, uh, from the other side um, who know uh, Git repositories, GitHub uh, or others uh, maintained in the cloud. Uh, so I, I try to, to balance both sides here. Um, so if you don't know what Git is, it's a version control system has been around for quite a while. Um, uh, if you've worked with it directly, you know that there's a lot of command line statements, very cryptic uh, for fans of, of that. Uh, you can uh, have a really great time with Git itself. Um, uh, at, uh, become basically the standard for uh, in, in many many areas for uh, versioning source code. Also, it was just uh, at the beginning meant for plain text files, but it, it, it turned out to be very suitable for uh, versioning uh, sources and, and and all sort of things that you want to develop. Um, obviously, not related to to ABAP by itself, uh, but to many programming languages. So the the basic flow for um, um, uh, Git um, is that you have on the on the one side a remote repository uh, and on the other side uh, the other parts are uh, things that you have locally a local version of the of the repository that contains uh, your source code and and uh, maybe even binary files that you need for your projects. Um, 
And uh, then there is an interaction between a working directory and the staging areas. You hear some of the Git terminology that will come across uh, later on. Um, if you're working directly with Git, you would have to type these things in uh, on the command line. Uh, so that's obviously um, not something for everyone. So the next thing that happens after Git came out, uh, uh, there was a, a movement to bring this whole thing to the cloud in a host and environment. Uh, where everything is on a you know, graphical user interface and you don't have to uh, type in these uh, various statements anymore. Uh, one of them uh, of these hosting services is GitHub. Um, this is what we will use here. And the main reason is that uh, ABAP Git is actually hosted itself uh, uh, on GitHub. Um, it's a you know, cloud-based uh, version control system, but it goes far beyond what Git itself does. Uh, so you can do things like, um, you know, the continuous integration uh, tests, you can uh, run build processes afterwards, and we see, we'll see a little bit uh, of that afterwards as well. Um, it is for profit, so GitHub, uh, now, now owned by uh, Microsoft, um, is trying to make money as well with this, but they offer really uh, a good free tier, so for me personally, I haven't had the need to, uh, to use any of the paid services there. I can do everything that I need personally uh, for my company on the free tiers. Um, now, uh, what is ABAP Git? Uh, it's basically the uh, client for Git uh, that is written in ABAP. Um, our friend Lars, he's mentioned a bunch of times uh, before today, uh, it has started this project um, and built the core piece that uh, lets ABAP systems talk to Git repositories uh, via an HTTP connection. Um, uh, and so it works with uh, you know, various services. Uh, today we'll uh, see how it works with GitHub. Uh, one of the nice things, and it was also one of my prerequisites for my company, um, is that it goes down all the way down to uh, uh, NetWeaver 702. So you're basically um, able to uh, build software, test software um, via this mechanism of this Git repositories and, and ABAP Git. Uh, on any of the available NetWeaver releases today. Uh, you can use it with Windows, uh, Java GUI. Uh, there's also some plans to move this to a, a plain uh, web HTML GUI, uh, but there's some uh, little bit hurdles um, where we're still struggling on how to do this, uh, uh, for example, with pop-ups that currently come up in SAP GUI. Um, I'll jump uh, right into uh, some of the demos so you see this. The, one and only thing that you really have to remember is ababgit.org. Um, this is the main landing page. Uh, some uh, key links here to the documentation, the, to the repository on GitHub. Uh, you can always get the latest build of ababgit from here. Um, and there's a, you know, the link to get the plugin for the Eclipse development environment if you uh, want to have it directly integrated into Eclipse. and um, uh, another website, .org, uh which is uh, a, a place that collects different public repositories um, and, and lets you see who is working on other open source projects and, and sharing their solutions. Uh, so ABAPGit is one of them that you'll find on there, but there's now, um, uh, I think, over 100 listed. Um, and you'll find my stuff there uh, pretty soon as well. Uh, I'll just show you a little bit about the documentation. Um, the first section about installation is the, the one that you probably want to, uh, to look at later on if you haven't set this up yet. Um, and uh, if you want to connect uh, uh, the system uh, via the internet to, let's say, GitHub or, or other repositories on the internet, um, then you will need also the SSL setup. It's used HTTPS. Uh, so uh, there's uh, uh, a small hurdle to get the right certificates installed and make sure that you have the right system parameters that allow you know, connecting um, your development system uh, to the internet. Um, you can also get from here or from the other pages, this uh, famous program set at a git. Um, it's a single source package um, and I'll show you how you can install that, just uh, right click and download that to your 
um, yeah, local system. And then from there, you can put it into your SAP box. Um, and now I have to move this a little bit uh, so that we can switch back and I can show you what this whole thing looks on GitHub. If you have never seen this before on the top, uh, you'll always see the, the two parts. One is the organization, ABAP Git itself has several repositories. Um, and uh, if you click on that, you will see the list of, of all the available parts. There's something about continuous integration. The documentation is separate um, uh, pretty soon as well. And uh, lots of test repositories you can find this way as well. And the second part is the name of the repository. So if you look at the URL, you'll see uh, both parts, github.com, name of the organization, which is AvapKit, and the name of the repository, which is AvapKit as well. Um, everything is in a folder structure, so it's basically a, a file system. All the different elements that you would uh, have in, a, um, you know, in your development projects would be hosted here. Um, the actual ABAP code you will, for ABAP Git projects, um, you would find under a, a SRC folder. If I go in there, you can see there's other subfolders and then uh, more files, but we'll get into the details uh, of that in a minute. So let's go uh, back to uh, the presentation and um, see what uh, we do um, when we want to get started with AppAppKit. Um, at the very beginning, you basically have what I just uh, showed you. You have your own SAP system on one side. I always have it in, this, uh, in these graphics in blue and on the other side, um, in this case, uh, a remote repository. We'll use a little um, demo uh, uh, repository, not AppAppKit itself, a very small project that I created yesterday um, during this, uh, this presentation. Um, and then when you install AppAppKit, uh, it adds um, basically to these two areas that you know from uh, you know, other uh, you know, Git processes to your ABAP system. It basically um, builds the connection between your active objects, your programs, uh, your classes, tables, um, everything that you do with ABAP development and the remote repository. And in between it creates a, a virtual version of a local repository. So you see all the files um, that you have, uh, that represent your local active objects. And in between, uh, there's a staging area um, that lets you move objects from the active objects over uh, to the local repository and then to the remote side. And we'll see there's also, it also works in the other direction. So the first part is that you will um, you know, create a local repository in ABAP Git. Um, that represents the, you know, is the link via the URL to one of the remote repositories that you find on the internet. Um, this is a site comment. You can also use, obviously, uh, uh, you know, Git servers that are in your enterprise within the firewall, right? That don't have to be on the internet. The key is that they exist via HTTPS. Um, so we create this repository, and then um, just like the Git basic Git workflow showed us, we can pull this code, these objects that are in our, uh, now in our local version into the active objects. And it's literally happening like magic, as we will see. There's uh, no statements that you have to type in. Um, it's just in the all in this graphical user interface. So let's have a look what this uh, would be like in the system. If I go to my SAP system, um, the first thing um, after you've downloaded the source code, you would go to uh, you know, your ABAP editor and create the program. Um, I'll just, uh, I did that already in the system. And uh, as you can see here, this is fairly lengthy. There's a, 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 some fancy tech that Lars has created that compiles all the different sources into a single uh, ABAP program. So this is over 106,000 lines long, contains the complete code of, uh, of ABAP Git. Um, so it's a very quick and simple installation. All you have to do is um, you know, upload this program, activate it, 
And uh, now if you uh, run this, uh, you get uh, as the very first uh, view, um, the tutorial page um, at, the, at the top, you will always see uh, which page you're on. Um, and a few menu items, you can see a list of the repositories that are included in your own system. Um, and you have two options for creating new repositories, either via an uh, online connection. Um, this is what we'll use here for uh, today. Um, or you can also use offline projects. Um, so if your system is not connected to the internet, you can also use AdAppKit. Uh, in this case, it works with a zip file that uh, uh, contains the complete content of the repository. Um, if you go if you go back to uh, Abap Git, you could actually get that zip file as well. Um, usually in GitHub, it's here under the code button. There's a download zip that would contain all these files here, and you can use them also then um, in your Abap Git system, even if you don't have an online connection. There are some settings uh, for you know globe that are either global or local. For example, if you have a proxy in your landscape, you would maintain this there. Um, or if you want to change the theming, the colors, if you want to go to a dark theme, uh, we can do that here too. And there are some uh, some additional tools. If you want to go back to the tutorial after, uh, it will show up only if there are no other repositories. You can always get here uh, via the um, the help link. So. Let's um, you know, create uh, a new first repository. So you click on uh, new online and uh, now I'll go over to my uh, demo. Let me see, I put this. Uh, tools, add another browser window open. Quickly go to my repositories on GitHub. I created one here. I can grab this uh, URL. Um, this is a little project. We'll see in a uh, shortly what it's going to do, what it actually contains. Um, I can just uh, you know, create uh, or use a new package name. I use one that's local here, Abap. Um, Conference 2021. Um, I, if the project contains various branches, I could pick one. We just leave the default, uh, and we don't have to enter anything else. Um, if you want to give it, for example, a different description, you could do this. Um, so this is the first step. You will create the online repository. If you saw very quickly, I had at the bottom it showed fetch files, fetch remote files. So your the ABAP system, ABAP Git, um, just did an HTTP request against this URL and retrieved the complete content of this repository. So uh, what you will see in this repository view at all times is a list of all the ABAP related objects. These are basically your TA dear entries there is a this repository contains uh, you know one program uh, an sap package and uh, you know a couple uh, you know BIME objects and html page um, and you can uh, i have this set up here under view to actually show me the file names here in the path columns um, the first one you will have in every ever git uh, Repository, it's uh, uh, um, containing the metadata, for example, this URL um, and uh, some additional settings. Um, and then uh, you might be curious, uh, it doesn't actually have the name of the package um, in the file or on the remote side. Uh, so uh, when I decide I, to put this into my system, this project, I use Abap conf 2021 as a package name, but maybe another customer has different naming conventions for their packages, so they can use actually a different name. Um, so in the on the remote side, you will always have the generic uh, file name package. Um, and you can see the files are as a default are in the source uh, subdirectory. And then um, the uh, it has the uh, kind of a naming convention on how the file is derived from the objects. Uh, it's always the object name, then the type of the object that you would also see in the you know, here in the front, T8 here, 
Um, and there is always, uh, you know, there's sometimes just one file, like for a package, there's just an XML with the metadata of the object. Um, in other cases, like here, um, there are several files, a class, what might be the, would have, for example, a part for um, the class source, and then another file for um, the local definitions, another file for the test classes. Um, but in this case, our project is uh, very simple, just one program. Um, now, if you look at the uh, top, there are a few other things aside from the description. You can always click on uh, the URL to open the, the remote repository. Um, you can change these, you can copy the URL. You see here the last uh, commit ID that you would also find if you looked on the uh, remote repository. You can favorite your projects. Um, you can switch branches and you also have the name of the of the package then uh, to look at. Um, you can click on these objects. It would open up the, uh, another, uh, well, in this case, it doesn't exist yet. Yeah, you can see that here on the status column um, when I click on it. Uh, but usually it would open the, uh, the object in another window. Um, you can also set it up if you're using the web development tools. Um, just go to the settings uh, and change that. Uh, to open up uh, ADT directly with these objects. Uh, now I can uh, do a few things with this uh, view. Um, the first one is to pull, and that was uh, what I showed you on the PowerPoint slides. So let's just do this. If I click pull, um, you see at the bottom very quickly, it deserializes all these files. So it converts the files into the, into the ABAP uh, representations. Uh, so in this case, it's one report. I'll just uh, activate it and hopefully all goes well. It uh, should come back and show me a new view. So now you can see that all the things where I had differences between my local objects that weren't existing yet and the remote site are gone. And now I have all these objects in my system. Um, this is the ideal case, there were no conflicts, everything was without syntax errors, right? So everything uh, turned out well, no errors found. Um, there could be things, right? Let's say on the remote side, somebody made a mistake and added this, you know, submitted the syntax error into their code. When you pull this and you activate it locally, obviously the object would uh, not be activated. Um, it would have a little icon next to it indicating that it's inactive and then you can review the source and see what actually happened. So let's see what this magical thing is. Um, I hope it works. You can see here, I did a little demo program. It's not very long, um, but that's not the point of it. Uh, you can just uh, start this and see this is actually one of these <laughs> fabulous games. Uh, you wonder how this actually works. It is using the HTML code troll within the SAP GUI. Um, so it's this uh, this little game, right, where you can um, you know move the move the numbers um, back and forth to try to get to to uh, 2048. Um, but it's not the point of uh, of uh, you know figuring out how to program this year. We want to see how our Git works. So let's uh, say um, I want to make a local change here. I can go into the source code. Right, and I say, wow, uh, this is the best conference ever, right? I think we all agree. Uh, well, I activate my source, um, and then I go back to uh, my repository, and uh, I click uh, refresh. It will serialize this source code, my local source code, again. And now I have a difference, right? Because I added some code to it. Um, and it, you see it's highlighted with a different color. It has a different status at the end. I can use this nice diff view here and see it side by side. Uh, this is what lots of people uh, who use GitHub uh, know from uh, you know, the, the, the web version of it in the app Git client here directly in our SAP system, we can see the same things. Um, the local version is always on the left, the uh, remote version is on the right. If you want to, you can also jump to the unified version, right? One is uh, uh, in, in green and in red mixed together. 
Um, so this is typically what you do um, when you're going back and forth with repositories. Now I've made a change uh, and let's see uh, how the story continues. Um, so this is basically what we did. In our app, app system, we modified some code. It turns inactive, we activate it. And now we can take the active object through you know, the reverse uh, process to push some changes from our app, app system back onto the remote side. This is what's called a staging. Um, and you first go to the stage. And in the staging area, you can decide which of the changes you actually want to push to the remote side. Um, and that process is then called committing or in ABAP git um, uh, commit and push uh, 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 one step. But at, in this process, the ABAP source codes are you know, so-called serialized, changed into a file representation, right? And those files you select in the staging area and move to the remote repository. So let's see what this is like in the uh, in ABAP Git. Um, so we have one change here. When I click on stage, um, it shows me all the changed objects. In this case, we had only one. Um, and um, you have to add this to uh, the staging area to your uh, to the files that you want to commit to the remote side. You can have various options here. You can commit all. There's this one button here or on this side. You just add it to the list and then select uh, commit. Um, there's one final step before that actually uh, you know ends up on the remote side. You have to add a comment. This is a mandatory part. And uh, uh, usually, uh, you know, if you're in a uh, project, not just by yourself, but working with other developers together, uh, you'd also add some description in here. So here, I just say um, added uh, comment, right? Um, it's myself, so I'm making the change with my email. If you do it in the name of somebody else, you could specify a different author here. Um, and if you don't want to commit to the main branch of the repository, but, but to a different one, you might want to open a new branch, you could uh, optionally add this here too. But let's uh, keep it simple. Um, you have to log on. Um, There's a difference um, to what you saw when I just cloned the repository. Now I want to make changes to the repository. Uh, and this is when I have to um, authenticate myself. Um, with uh, GitHub, you have to provide your personal token. And um, there you go. Uh, now the difference is gone. You should uh, now have a look on the remote side. Uh, what happened there? If I now go here in my remote repository, I actually see here already on the top, this always shows the last commit. Here is my comment. I added the comment 39 seconds ago. Um, and if we go to the source code, what did I change? Here, this program, you'll see uh, what the air on the remote side, I have my comment too. Now, um, this can go back and forth. It can also go obviously in the other direction. Um, let's say I want to change here uh, some HTML code. Um, right? You can just go on the remote side um, and instead of uh, this, I'll add some fancy stuff here. Uh, maybe uh, you can all have a guess who knows the Unicode pages um, by heart. You can take a guess what I just added there. Uh, I'll commit this directly to the remote side. And we go back to, uh, oops, I went too far, yeah, to the app app system. Refresh it again. Now you see here a delta um, on the diff view. I can see uh, here I added some fancy stuff. Uh, we'll just pull it into my system again. Um, in this case, uh, it asked me to overwrite uh, because there was a change uh, that I made here. Um, and let's run the program again and see what happens. Anybody guess? Yeah, 
that was the Unicode for heart. <laughs> so uh, it's these things you can see it's uh, pretty straightforward back and forth. Uh, I just did this uh, now by myself. Um, let's uh, see how this whole thing looks in one picture. You basically uh, spent uh, spent your time in this uh, continuous development cycle, right? So I did this now by myself, but obviously in a bigger project, you would have several developers who do this uh, in parallel on um, different objects or maybe the same objects or maybe on different projects in the same system. So um, this can go uh, round and round and round where you make changes remote, change things locally. Um, uh, if you are in a straight development system and using the remote side basically just as a backup you would always be in one direction right but maybe you clone another repository let's say um you want to have the latest changes of the ABAP logger repository right um somebody else made a change here you want to get the latest version you just pull it back into your system and uh, if you want to contribute to it you make changes and commit them back to the remote side so this is basically um, how ABAP Git works. There's a, a, um, a few more comments. Um, if I do it with the online mode, I use the pull and then a stage and commit via the HTTP connection. At the beginning, I mentioned there's also an offline mode. Uh, it works very similarly. Uh, but instead of HTTP, we have here an exchange of zip files between um, you know, the, the remote or the repository and ABAP Git. Um, and that's uh, that's basically it. I'll, I'll let you uh, play around with it yourself if you haven't tried it. Really encourage you to uh, just download ABAP Git, set it up. Um, there's a little bit uh, with the SSL connection if you uh, work with uh, you know, repositories that require SSL. Um, but it's all very well documented. Just pick one of your favorite uh, hosting services, whether it's GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, you name it. Maybe you have another cloud provider, or you have already something in your own uh, own enterprise. Um, create repositories, commit uh, some changes to them, make some uh, make some contributions, and uh, check out all the, the other open source uh, projects um, on .org. And if you have any more questions, feel free to contact me either here by email, or you can find me also. Um, at uh, Mark FBE on Twitter. And uh, with that, I'll uh, send it back. Um, later on, when you download the presentation, there's many links in the back with additional resources. So you can uh, you know, go from beginner level to intermediate and then um, become an ever good expert as well. Very, very big thanks. but not only for your uh, presentation also a lot of big thanks for your work you invested in uh, the abap jit tool because without you without christian Günther, and without last it would be that tool it is right now so um, a special thanks also for this yeah uh, we, should, we should we should say that there's over 130 different uh, contributors yeah, to this project there, there are a lot of right? contributors, so but but there are everybody some makes players. little <laughs> everybody makes little improvements here and there or suggestions and um as you know with open source projects it, it's only as good as, uh, as you know yeah. Yeah, the and people so using it and it. giving feedback right uh, so I, I have to say mark actually a really great talk um Thanks for making the introduction to ABAP Git, and thanks for actually making sure that when I mark the channel as not uh, uh, suitable for children, that you actually put into with the fucking manual. <laughs> <laughs> good idea, right? <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. So we actually on the safe side. I didn't spell it out. I didn't spell it out. <laughs> Well, I still think that uh, uh, ABAP Git is not really uh, has not really reached uh, many companies yet. I think the, the the companies where people are that are really top of their game do know it and use it. For any other company uh, that are more traditional or where the people are like working from nine to five, I do not think that ABAP Git actually gets the recognition it should have. But I also hope that maybe some people from that kind of companies that are more traditional are now also uh, considering adopting ABAP Git. 
this is uh, one of the few tools in the last 30 years on, on Hubbard where you really can say it, it's a game changer. And what yeah, you can I, do I, with I agree. Hubbard Git is totally different. It allows you to go for a total different uh, development flow like traditionally. So this is really a game changer that deserves the word. So uh, please use it. If you have questions, reach out to Mike. Uh, you can, he speaks three of three languages, so it shouldn't <laughs> be a problem actually. Up up uh, Java and CSS, right? <laughs> <laughs> and JavaScript. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The only thing I sometimes is, is wondering is there some personas flavor for the uh, ABAP report, ABAP Git report? Personas flavor, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's yeah, we did, obviously today we have, don't have a, a lot of time to get into this, but there's so many different uh, use cases for you know this, this scenario, right? Um, some are using it really just as a backup. A lot of companies have started using it uh, you know, to transfer code from lower releases into S4 or into cloud environment. Um, and on, on to some smaller companies like yeah. uh, SAP. <laughs> yeah. But we, yeah. Have, we have to say the biggest, I believe the biggest advantage is actually that you can use ABAP Git, as you said, to archive code and you can delete code actually yeah. without having to fear that it's deleted. Absolutely. You know, this this is really to get rid of the damn commented source code about five pages in the beginning of a class or a report just because you were afraid to delete it because you could lose that old information. Use yeah. ABAP Git at least for this. It's a real game changer. Yeah. So, and